How is that plan working out for you? That is something I heard over and over and over again this past weekend in London, where Dan had asked me to MC the one day event. And I was honored to do that. It was a great event. There were close to a thousand people in that audience. And Dan had written his Sayonara speech that this was going to be it. He was going to sign off, go on to do whatever else he wanted to do. But he said very, very strange for him. He'd thought about some things that recently happened, some of the successes that had happened recently, and he decided he would change that decision and continue on. As you imagine, the audience went crazy uh, for that. So I'm, I'm really glad to see that he made that decision. What struck me, though, is when Dan said repeatedly, how is that working out for you? And I would encourage you to ask the same question of yourself. Whatever plan you are on now, whatever process you are working, how is that working out for you? Is it getting you to where you want to be? Most of the time, for most of the people at that seminar, the reason they were at that seminar or the reason they go to the castle or the reason they do business with me or the reason they go to the free materials, any of those things, is guess what? The plan really isn't working out for them. And so it's important to evaluate that and say, what do I need to do differently to get me to a different place? Most of the people that have taken uh, forever or not succeeded just keep trying to do the same thing over and over and the next book will give me the answer as opposed to just understanding that you have to work it hard you have to be focused you have to put the work in and if it's not working out you have to change your plan i spent some time with sally who is uh, dan's wife and she and i worked a deal down in florida together that's how i originally met sally before she was married to dan and she said uh, that as as with me i flew back uh, last night to uh, america they flew to washington dc and uh, she commented it was good seeing you in action on saturday and i think all in all it went very well well sally i would agree with that i think it went very well but what she said in this email to me and there's a lot in this email that i'm not going to read but it's amazing to think what some of the mentees have achieved some being in the right place at the right time, others through sheer tenacity. But if they had not believed in Dan, many would not have even tried. So he should be very proud of himself. Yeah, I agree. He should be very proud of himself. Um, the, the amount of people that succeed, as with anything uh, that is of great value, is small, whether that's pro sports, you name it. But there are a tremendous amount of people that have succeeded. And the trillion dollars in wealth that's been created with QLA, uh, I am absolutely convinced, is not a big enough number. Uh, Dan shared a bunch of testimonials. They're in the process of doing a documentary on Dan. And as part of that due diligence, they went out and found people who had interacted with Dan. And there were a husband and wife, I believe it was, that had built a fitness business. Uh, I'm not usually a fan of fitness businesses, but the way they did it, I am. And Dan had not been in contact with them for, I think, 20 years. And they had become billionaires as a result of that. Um, and so how many people have followed QLA? How many people, since the material is free online, have done it that Dan doesn't know about? So again, I would encourage you, look at the results you're getting now. Look at what needs to change. And I'll give you an example, which is not a business example. When I was doing endurance events, uh, I had runner's knee, and I just ran through it. It was fine. You know, it, it hurt, but so be it. The, um, so I went and saw a physical therapist. He told me that I should use a foam roller, that uh, I did. And the next morning, the runner's knee was gone, totally gone. And I had suffered through it for two years. Literally, one application of a foam roller, I loosened up the connective tissues and my joint pain was gone. But what about those two years? 
So again, think about what you're doing, what plan you're working. I don't care if it's now trying to get to a castle seminar, if it's going and looking on my website for the, uh, the courses or coaching that I offer, whether it's the free material, but this process works. This QLA methodology that Dan Penner created more than 25 years ago absolutely works. Uh, when I listened to the Q&A that was part of this seminar, it was amazing how many of those questions were focused on problems that will never happen. Um, I've said it, Dan said it, Dan has used the example of Josh Kim saying that 95% of the stuff that he worried about never happened. Boy, is that ever true. Um, I have a mentee who I just uh, was sent an interview that he did with uh, Brian Rose, and Brian Rose asked him, what's holding you back? And he commented, fear. Uh, I would encourage you, if you're going to be motivated by fear, uh, don't let it hold you back, but in fact, let it motivate you. I've talked a lot about the quote that I saw years and years ago that I turned into a meme, which was, imagine if hell was having to watch an endless movie of what your life could have been had you taken the actions to make your dreams happen. Now, that fear, that was motivational to me. So I would encourage you to do that. Be selfish. That was one of the other things that came out of this. Be selfish. Uh, get what's good for you. Don't let people talk you into not doing this for whatever reasons they'll give you. You've changed. You're different. You should be happy with what you have. All of those things are those people that have accomplished what you want to accomplish. And if they aren't, I would encourage you not to pay attention to that feedback. So I hope that's helpful. I'm going to uh, do some additional thoughts from that seminar. Um, for many people, I believe it was life-changing, but the proof will be in the pudding. But as I said several times throughout this podcast, how is that working out for you? Take a look at the results you're getting and take a look at what has to change. And remember that example of the runner's knee. You can work a program for years and that's not working. And then a very small change can produce massive results. There were people at that seminar that have done, I think it was 73 days they've done a deal. Uh, there were people that hadn't done things for years and years and years that decided to become motivated to do something differently and had achieved tens of millions of dollars in less than a year. I make no guarantee that that's going to happen to you, but there's evidence of that. And part of the talk I gave at the end was that you know the process works. The evidence is too clear that the process works. Whether it works for you, that's the important thing. So, Remember that, focus on those things, get selfish, follow the steps, critically important. I can't tell you how many of those questions were, how do I finance it? What happens if this happens? Well, what happens if it doesn't happen? You know, focus on a good idea, focus on building the team and follow those steps. So if you do that with intensity and focus and work it hard, I believe that you will be amazed at the results that you can achieve. But that said, it's going to require hard work and it's going to require a tremendous amount of focus. But when compared to, imagine if hell was having to watch an endless movie of what your life could have been had you taken the actions to make your dream comes true, that's motivational in so many ways that I think it will spur you on to take the action required. So again, make 2020 your year. Find out what you need to do differently. Use the tools from free materials, as I've talked about, all the way up to a castle seminar. But when I left that event, I think Winnika, who books those, had more than a thousand emails that she had received. So, but again, only a small percentage of people will follow up with that. So, uh, focus and the hard work and keeping at it, not quitting, uh, are tremendously important.
There is a lot of free information you can use to acquire already profitable businesses. This is Bruce Whipple. Thanks for listening to the Business Acquisition Podcast. And remember, you miss 100% of the opportunities you fail to take. And procrastination truly is the thief of time. So do something today, please. Your future self will be proud of you.